We're now going to cover the super strip, strip and show you how that works. So we have a channel, so we're collecting the uh, clarinet over here. Press the select key and that will then bring up the processing for the channel. So by pressing the select screen we then have the option of uh, using some of the other screens over here which are the uh, selections for that channel. So we have processing, uh, routing, those are the two main options for when dealing with a particular channel. Colour coded, green select key, you can use the two processing there. So on what we have on the processing screen, uh, we have the, the, the gain settings for the channel. Uh, they can be controlled directly by the gain switch over here. You can change the gain. Uh, you have some metering that you can see come through. Uh, then there is uh, a gate, which I'll cover slightly shortly. Should cover a bit. I'll cover in, in a short time. I'll cover in the future. And then you have the EQ screen. Uh, the EQ screen has, has got significant uh, advantage over the analog desk. You have what's called a high pass filter, which cuts off the low frequency sounds that you don't want to hear. And then you have four sweepable controls over here, uh, which you can actually change the frequency and the width of the filter of the notch there. So you can also select them by touching the knob over here and changing the parameter directly. So in that case there I can also change it from its dedicated width notch or I can actually set it by touching it and go through. You have the frequency you can sweep it over so you can sweep that across back where it was and then there's uh, how deep the notch is there. So that's the EQ screen then you have the compressor screen as well. Um, as well as the select key, there is also prefade listen. That does not necessarily have to correspond with the select key, but we've set it up so if you press prefade listen, the select key will automatically follow it. That puts the sound out into the headphones over here. Volume control for the headphones is just there. On the routing screen as well, you can select where it goes. Generally, there'd be no need to touch that. The only thing you might want to do is actually assign it to one of the two master volumes over here, one of the two DCAs, but we'll cover that a bit more. I mentioned that the auxes um, come out slightly differently. So we have the superscript at the top. The auxes now, where we used to send things to uh, feedback, mostly to the uh, foldback speakers, uh, feedback speakers, they're like slightly Freudian slip. So the foldback speakers um, are now covered down the controls down this side here and we've built it here so that we have mixes one to four on the four foldback speakers we have the four wedges on the floor and then we have another one here for the hearing aid loop and another one for the mix loop i've set these up so these are pre-faders so if you change the fader level for an individual channel the volume out of there doesn't change but for the loop and the recording they're post fader so you bring those up by pressing the button corresponding to it so to see what's in foldback speaker one you press that and then the faders change to show what is actually, what contribution of the sound is going to there. So in this channel, you can see that we've put in for Volbat Speaker 1 uh, quite a lot of uh, bit of piano. Most instruments are, are lower because it's the vocals um, Volbat Speaker. We've actually put more vocals going through. So we've got more of uh, channel 1 and channel 2 um, and less of 3 and 4. So that's the mix for Volbat 1. Fallback 2, uh, which is into the instrumental stage, slightly different mix, again, fallback 3, fallback 4. You can quite easily change these um, back to left and right, the master mix, by just pressing either that, or if you're on that, if you press it the same key a second time, it'll also go back to left and right as well. Another beauty of using a digital desk is it's possible to recall settings and scenes. So this desk has the ability to recall a number of items. One of them are called scenes, which is the complete setup for all your mixes. And you can also have what's called library functions, which bring back the levels for a particular channel or particular function of a channel. So in terms of scenes, there's a dedicated button. You press the scenes button here. And then we have a series of these built in here. Um, the first scene is the one that... As, as, a, as a team we're going to use to start with which is called EBC Start and that is a good starting point. It'll load up our normal average Sunday mix and from there you can build up and make whatever minor changes are needed for the actual service that's going on. So to bring it up you press the scenes button, you select the option here by touching it, so 
we're going to go ABC start and then you hit recall here just to confirm you want to recall it yep and that brings back the standard settings that we use there are also what's called library features so if I actually select a channel so I select the um, clarinet over here go to the processing screen that one there if you see actually it was last set up as a saxophone we want to bring that back as a clarinet so we can bring the library function here touch the library function which is the blue key here and then we have two choices if I select the user list here we've actually got the here channel library for that for, for standard setups so here we've got one that's called Clar T, unfortunately you're limited on the number of characters you can put in here. And that is actually the clarinet, so we can recall that. Recall that, and that then sets, brings back the settings for the clarinet. So it sets the compression, sets the EQ, um, and if it had a gate it would set that as well. It's also set the gain level. If you want to rename a, a channel, you press up there, on there, and you can rename the channel as well. So... This one's not limited, or well, it is actually, it's limited to six characters. So we'll call that clarinet one. Okay, it's renamed it. So that brings back the library functions. Um, now the, the, the aim is, is we'll have a complete set of those, so they'll be a good starting point for all the instruments that we typically see on a Sunday service. Another feature that a digital desk has is, is that the, the mute controls on a channel are actually uh, can be linked together and you can actually mute multiple things at once. So no, no need to continue to be Rick Wakeman uh, trying to mute the music group on a Sunday morning. So the mutes here, you have the individual channel mutes. So here, radio mic on, off. When it's bright red, it's off, or the mute is on. Bit, bit of confusion there. But on top of that as well, we have got additional mutes. So you can have a universal mute on the DCAs. So by pressing everything on a, on a, mute, on a DCA mute, it actually mutes everything associated that's going into that DCA. And that includes the, any outputs from that channel, such as uh, the foldback speaker for it. To make it slightly easier, I've brought those two mute groups out onto the soft keys over here. So we have a selection of soft keys here. That one mutes the instruments. That one mutes the vocals. That one actually mutes everything. Uh, other soft keys here as well is we've also got one that if you had a PFL live, you can clear the PFL by pre pressing that button as well. One thing to watch with the mutes, and this is probably the only thing that I really think is a bit poor about this desk, is it's very difficult to actually um, bring, bring if, you've, if you've muted a group, you can't bring back an individual instrument from that. So say we have a situation where we've muted all the instruments, they're not playing anymore, uh, but the service has progressed and maybe as part of, uh, part of the service, we now want to bring the guitar in, maybe playing something in relation to some prayers or something like that. So if I've muted all the instruments, if they're muted on a, a, a mute group or a DCA, they actually flash. So I've muted all the instruments, I've muted all the vocals. What I can't do is actually unmute it. So say I wanted to unmute vocal 2, if I press it, it just actually permanently mutes it. So if I took off the it, it, um, vocal mute, that one is now totally muted. So if I press it again, it just mutes with the group. Um, so if you did want to bring back a particular microphone, it's back to the old days, I'm afraid. So if I just want, knew that vocal 2 was coming up, I'd have to mute 1, 3 and 4, and then unmute the vocals, and then it would just about come up. As I say, not, not particularly impressed by that, but just something to be watched out for. But typically, you can just go and mute them all in one hit, and that, that helps tremendously. And finally on the desk, uh, we have a talk button, which is over here. Uh, by pressing that uh, and speaking into the microphone, you can actually speak your output will come out of the, all the four foldback speakers. So when you want to uh, attract the attention of a musician or vocalist, you can uh, shout down there. 